and blessed is he that shall not be scandalized in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But first, a word on the epistle. St. Paul, remember, is saying today, Befriend one another in Christ, as he has befriended you. And do this for God's honor. We studied this epistle together a year or two ago. The infant church in Rome was divided. Imagine that. They had two apostles there. And these two bishops sometimes disagreed with each other, I note in passing. There was the first pope, and he was St. Peter, and the greatest missionary of all time, St. Paul. And there in Rome, there were divisions among the faithful. Almost splits. Certainly dissension. No wonder our blessed Lord says today, and blessed is he that shall not be scandalized in me. Because the church is Christ. It is his mystical body. The problem in Rome was, well, is, an old one. It's always Jew versus Gentile. That's the key to understanding almost everything that goes on in history and current events. God permitted, you see, the Jewish converts to Christianity to keep the old kosher laws for about another 30 years or so after Pentecost until the destruction of the temple at Jerusalem. Then it became a mortal sin. But the Gentiles, the church settled this very early on, were never obliged to observe these rules. The Gentile converts, Romans, were amused at all of the fuss their ex-Jewish brethren made about the occasional ham sandwich or a nice plate of shrimp scampi. The Jewish converts, for their part, were scandalized at the very thought of it. So St. Paul admonishes them. You must befriend one another as God has befriended you for God's honor. Kindness. Our Lord, in the Gospel, answers St. John's query, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? He answers that question with a list of his kindnesses. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And then he concludes by saying, and blessed is he who shall not be scandalized in me. Now our Lord was all the time scandalizing his followers rather than saying something sweet and soothing, insisting on some teaching or another quite unpopular at the rollout, the blessed sacrament did not go over well. Remember? And then the business about him eating and drinking with sinners. There still are today Pharisees who forbid it. And then, shocking everyone, he makes a whip and he goes to the temple and he cleanses it and he turns over the traitor's tables. Now pay attention. To be scandalized has the sense in Scripture of finding out that Christ is more than you bargained for. Who hasn't had that astounding discovery? Try not to be scandalized. Stay with Christ, even at a cost. Be kind. What does kindness do in all of this? Well, it has an immense power to bring out the good in others. 
Most people have more goodness in them than ever you'd guess from daily life. Or you get glimpses of nobility in others, but it stays secret and oftentimes is carried to the grave undeveloped. Life is rarely so challenging, so full, as to enable us to bring out everything that's within us. Bad times, though, persecution, suffering, has on many that happy effect. But Almighty God made all of us with a built-in potential to live forever. Now you stop for a moment and think about that. Eternity. You will never cease to exist forever and a day. Will you be either in heaven or in hell? How can we, in light of that, in our brief allotted three score and ten years, how can we give more than a taste of what might be or what yet will be? Second, who hasn't seen a real stinker warm and expand under kindness. This starts with children. You know, they can be unpleasant little creatures at times, but this does not exclude grumpy old seniors either. Generosity pops out where only meanness had grown before. Some sweet modesty, say, which survives for years under an avalanche of sin. Virtues come alive with a newfound vigor and strangle those old bad habits of a lifetime. The things grace can find in the most unlikely people. Think about it. What potential? I can unlock it or at least let kindness pick the lock. And when opened, I learn something about myself, a good kind of confidence, of self-respect, which is a survival technique in this world, which is designed in the Great Reset to crush you into anonymous submission. As you learn about yourself in kindnesses school, you see that you have the strength. You do, to stand up for the truth. And this too is protected and directed by kindness. You don't have to let yourself be trampled underfoot. But speaking of which, kindness has picked up many a fallen man who has then gotten up and gone out to do great things for God. Why not you? And this just because of the little things done for him. Next, kindness shrinks sin. No one, Father Faber says, no one who ever received a kindness didn't at least sin a little less as a result. See, the sad old world, as it really is, angels move among men daily, doing everything possible to hinder sin. And grace, overflowing from the good God's goodness, surrounding and overpowering sin. But together with angels and grace, there is a third force. Tiny little things, they fly about, with their heads down, and they're veiled. They wear sunglasses, but no mask, of course. They're flitting about everywhere. What do they do? Well, they make sad men smile and the angry grow meek, and the sick to be less complaining. 
And they light up hope in the eyes of the dying, sweetening the bitterest moods, placating monsters of men just when they are about to strike, always knowing how to turn away a sinner from his sin. At the last moment, these little cherubs are actually vast powers. Souls listen, which were deaf to the pleading of angels to get in the door of hearts where grace has given up waiting. And once inside, they hold the door open for angels and for grace, and they say, come on in. They hardly ever know defeat. Who is this flying army, this invincible air force? They are acts of kindness. This is their work in souls, a modest goal, perhaps, but often the miracle we will have to settle for, to lessen the number of sins in the world. But remember that almost sin might have been the first fall in a downward plunge into hell. But now, that encouragement, encouragement both given and received, forms the first firm link in the golden chain which we call final perseverance. The blind see, our Lord says, the deaf hear, so powerful is kindness, so pressing that it does not insist on a kind action or wait for well-chosen words. No, a mere tone of voice, a look in the eye, the shyest of half-smiles is everything, and it is enough. And all is right in an instant. Our Lord lists miracles that define his mission. In our day, just a little kindness would almost qualify, as it does qualify us and others for the kingdom. Befriend one another as Christ has befriended you for God's honor. God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.